मैं तो दिल्ली यार दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन In the news tonight, a woman tests positive for COVID-19 in Bar. Three recover from coronavirus. And new procedures announced for hospital visitation. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. Fiji now has 18 confirmed cases of the deadly COVID-19, with the latest patient being a 51-year-old woman from Bar. The woman was amongst those tested from Friday until yesterday. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama says the woman and her contacts are now in isolation and she is in stable condition. Ritika Pratap with the details. From Friday throughout today, health officials tested 123 samples for the coronavirus and one result came back positive. One uh, test returned what we call a soft positive result, meaning we couldn't say with certainty whether this sample was uh, positive for COVID-19. After further testing and uh, consultations with our reference lab in Melbourne, they found that these uh, results indicate that uh, this sample came from someone in the final stage of recovery from coronavirus. The woman has travel history and followed the self-isolation regulations in place. The patient returned from uh, the United States on the 22nd of March. After completing 14 days of home quarantine, she was cleared. Only later did she develop COVID-like uh, COVID uh, symptoms. She was then tested, giving us a soft positive result. The results of our tests make it likely this patient has been carrying uh, COVID-19 for weeks. Luckily, our contact tracing, our contact tracing, sorry, which began as soon as she was first tested on the 18th of April, identifies her as a low risk transmitter. Benny Marama says they will not be locking down Bar Town as yet. However, health mobile teams will be conducting a large-scale screening of the entire province. The Prime Minister voicing his concerns about last weekend, which saw reports across the country of blatant violations of the physical distancing directives. Supermarkets, retailers and shops should have uh, hand sanitizer available and prominent uh, signage instructing physical distancing. Children should not be up and about, out and about. They must stay home, as should the elderly. Benny Marama says people need to work together with authorities in a collective effort to fight the virus and flatten the curve. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Contact tracing continues for those who came in close contact with patient 18, a 51-year-old woman from Bar. Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Chimesa Tundrabu says tests done on the patient's husband, sister-in-law and brother-in-law return negative. However, they are in isolation in Lautoka Hospital. Dr. Tundrabu says they will be tested again on the 14th of next month. He adds a total of 24 tests have been done in the last 24 hours and all have returned negative. This brings to a total of more than 750 tests that we have uh, completed to date and we will continue um, to uh, test according to our set uh, case definition and as our clinics and our fever clinics continue to identify uh, suspected cases that needs further investigation. Three of the 18 COVID-19 patients have recovered as tests done twice have returned negative. However, Health Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangai Nabete says they will remain isolated in their homes for another 14 days. Dr. Wangai Nabete says the close contacts of the patients who have tested negative a few times will also be discharged from the hospitals but will need to enter home isolation. He adds the health officials will be doing regular checks and the discipline forces will be making sure they are at home. Uh, so far we've got uh, at least a one in six uh, uh, um, uh, mathematical uh, uh, version of saying that uh, so far one in six are well and have recovered from the virus.
government is introducing new measures in its fight against the deadly COVID-19 virus. With 18 confirmed cases in the country, Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama says the new health protection measures nationwide is being targeted to help the vulnerable. He says the virus is deadliest in already ill patients, and that's why it's vital to keep coronavirus away from patients in hospital. Only two visitors a day will be allowed to see a patient, and the visitation window will only be one hour. Visitors will enter facilities at one at a time, and we need to be health checked prior to entry. Our standing ban on visitations to isolation wards and facilities will continue. Up ahead, people continue breaching curfew and protests on U.S. streets over COVID-19 restrictions. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One, Nando. A father of four charged with the alleged murder of Mbaleyanganinga village headman Moritike Mainalulu has been remanded in custody. Veresa Vati appeared at the Lambasa Magistrate Court today, charged with one count of murder and one count of failure to comply with order contrary to Section 69.3 of the Public Health Act. Eleanor Tarangayview has more. On the first charge of murder, it's alleged that on 16th April, Vatia, a former associate pastor, assaulted minor Lulu at Mbaleanga Ninga village in Vaturova Dakaunrove, resulting in his death. For the second charge of failure to comply with orders, Vatia is alleged to have gathered with three others without any lawful reason to drink alcohol on the same day. It's alleged that during this drinking session, Mainalulu had confronted the man about breaching social gathering restrictions when he was assaulted by Vatia. In court today, Vatia's lawyer applied for bail but with strict conditions, saying his client has no previous criminal record, is willing to provide two sureties and adhere to curfew orders, is not a flight risk and is willing to surrender travel documents. Police prosecutors objected to bail, saying the offense is serious in nature as a life was lost, adding that tension is high in the village as the deceased is the village headman. Prosecutors add the case is of national interest and the accused needs to be remanded for the security of his own life. Magistrate Bim Sarajagatore ruled that murder is an indictable offense and it is not in the interest of justice to release the accused on bail. The case has been transferred to the Lombasa High Court and will be called on the 14th of May. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. 93 individuals were arrested for breaches in the last 24 hours, with Southern Division recording the highest. 36 cases were recorded in the South, 21 for social gathering breach and 15 for breach of curfew. The East recorded the second highest number of social gathering breach arrests with 26 cases and one case of curfew breach. The Northern Division recorded 19 arrests for curfew breach. The Western Division recorded 10 cases of social gathering breach and one for breach of curfew. Police has recorded a spike in the crime rate lately. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Benengilio says they have to also hit hard on areas concerning drugs, given that more people are unemployed due to COVID-19. Gilio says they have also noted an increase in domestic violence. Gilio is therefore pleading to members of the public to be more responsible and not to stretch the police capabilities to deal with other issues. Regards to drugs, that's still an issue. We've been making arrests uh, as soon as we lifted the checkpoints. We've been monitoring those that are likely to move it. We've made arrests. Uh, there's been a few murder cases that have happened. The Ministry of Employment is investigating 305 labour complaints lodged related to COVID-19. These include non-payment of statutory leave entitlement, entitlements and other entitlements under the Employment Relations Act 2007. Minister Parvin Kumar says employers and workers need to work together to find solutions which are fair while positioning the economy to be able to bounce back as quickly as possible once the threat of coronavirus has subsided. He adds COVID-19 presents the biggest economic challenge in the living history for Fijians. The minister says they have consulted with businesses and employees throughout Fiji and are aware that these are difficult times for all parties involved, 
particularly in travel-related industries. Damage caused by Tropical Cyclone Harold runs into the millions. Prime Minister Burenge Mbaini Marama says the agriculture sector has suffered over $27 million worth of damage, while roads and jetties took a $22 million hit, he says Mbaini Marama. More than 500 homes have been destroyed, with many hundreds sustaining damage. Overall, more than 180,000 Fijians saw their homes, lives and livelihoods suffer from the brunt of TC Harold. For many, that help uh, has uh, already arrived with food rations being delivered and uh, cleanup commands in some of our hardest hit areas. Electricity and water supply has been restored for most of the country. As we pick up the pieces from Harold's Earth, uh, we can again devote ourselves to an enemy that will last far longer than any storm, the COVID-19. Turning overseas, protesters in four states in the U.S. are holding rallies, defying stay-at-home orders and demanding governors lift the lockdowns. But the country is grappling with surging death tolls, which is now 41,000. In the United Kingdom, nearly 600 deaths have been reported in the past day, taking the death toll there to more than 16,000. The health workers say they are desperate for more protective equipment as they battle to fight COVID-19. And Whitney joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie, in business tonight. Help for SME businesses. And tourism numbers come crunching down. Stay with us. My name is Neha, and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. government program is now hoping to assist small and medium-sized enterprises in Fiji navigate out of the drastic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Business Link Pacific, which operates under the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, aims to support the private sector by addressing challenges. Kuroi Tandalala reports. Business Link Pacific is offering free business advice to its partners to help grow economic activity. They follow the step-by-step uh, -step process and they will be able to assess their business in various areas like accounting, management, strategic planning, exports, standards, human resource. The assistance is mainly targeted at businesses that employ between 5 to 50 employees. The Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation says this is vital to ensure SMEs are up and running as soon as possible as they play a critical role in economic growth. Access to available financial packages. Uh, refinancing, renegotiating loans, and new working setup. Each subsidy package will cover services for up to New Zealand $5,000 per SME. So far, we have uh, we have got uh, around 300 businesses, SMEs that have gone through the business health check. Federation Chief Executive Kameli Batiweti has urged small business operators to take advantage of this initiative in order to survive the financial calamity. Business advice is more important today than ever before. And so the advisors that they have identify what are their weaknesses, what are their strengths. Business Link Pacific will be providing services such as business continuity plans, financial planning, human resource impact on operations, and business coaching to help SMEs through these difficult times. Kori Tandulala, FBC News. Provisional numbers show that visitor arrivals for March 2020 totaled 27,972, a decrease of 52.8% compared to March 2019. The Bureau of Statistics say the decrease can be attributed to the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic, which result, resulted in government restricting international travel. The closure of the Nandi International Airport towards the end of March also added to the decline. Australia was down by 51 percent, the United States by 53.9 percent, while Kiwi visitors dropped by 41 percent. China, the rest of the Asia and the Pacific Islands recorded similar declines across the board. Sharon is here now with the latest from the money market. Let's have a quick look at the activities on the stock exchanges. For South Pacific Stock Exchange last week, a total of six trades were completed with just above 7,700 shares, adding to $18,719 in value traded. Three of the listed securities recorded trading activities, while two recorded share price movements. 
Amalgamated Telecom holding shares fell by 18 cents and closed the week at $2.40, while RB Patel Group shares dropped by 29 cents to end at $3.40. Meanwhile, on Wall Street, U.S. stock futures traded lower last night as investors weighed the latest coronavirus news along with a sharp decline in U.S. crude prices. Last night, all three futures, Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500, and Nasdaq 100 all pointed to a lower open Monday. While well, last week's gain also put the S&P 500 in down more than 30 percent above their intraday lows set on March 23rd. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Start off a new week and let's look at today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fijian dollar gained against most of the currencies we trade with, only weakening against New Zealand and the Australian dollar. On to the commodities market, it was a decline all around. The price of crude oil fell again after Friday, closing at $15.42 per barrel. Gold also dropped to $1,679 per ounce, while silver was down to $15.15 per ounce. That's it from business tonight. Back to Jackie with the latest in sports. Thanks so much for that, Whitney. In sports tonight, Pacific Island nations hold the key in world rugby voting. And let's council decide on mini games, says Fasanok. This and more coming up. Hola, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. It seems the Pacific Islands could hold the key to victory as Augustin Pichot and Sir Bill Beaumont enter the final week of campaign to be the next chair of World Rugby. Between them, they just hold four votes, but that could be all that one candidate needs. Fijiana 15's captain Seri Malewaningila has expressed concerns over player fitness during this period. Sporting facilities have been closed and all forms of social gatherings banned in order to combat the spread of COVID-19. Lewaningila says this has not allowed the team to work together on fitness and set pieces, which will be vital come the Rugby World Cup next year. We can't train on our own. Uh, we used to train with the team. Uh, so, uh, and getting up to that international standard to play for next year, uh, mentally it's going to be a challenge. The Fiji Football Association is mourning the loss of two great football legends, Mitieli Turanga Nikeli and Chochi Tui. Tui died in a tragic accident along Dumba Village feeder road in Navo last Saturday, while former bar player Mitieli Turanga Nikeli died of a short illness at the bar hospital at the age of 77. The two will be remembered for their leadership, loyalty to their districts, and for being entertaining footballers. The fate of the Pacific minigame should be left to the Games Council to decide. This is the view of the Fasanok Chief Executive Lorraine Ma responding to Sports Commission Chair Peter Maisie's comment on Fiji unlikely to be able to afford sending athletes for the Games next year. Ma says they will await a decision by the Games Council on the next step to be taken. We should wait first to see what the Pacific Council does. Because for all we know, they might defer it to the following year. National bowlers are urged to keep themselves mentally and physically fit, despite the postponement of the World Outdoor Bowling Championship. Team management... Usa Kaleem says with the COVID-19 restrictions in place, bowlers have been advised to train individually. Kaleem says while most bowlers will look to address their physical fitness, mental preparation will be crucial as well. Keeping up with their fitness and do mental preparation, so as shadow bowling, which means they imagine and uh, play. That's it from sports. Coming up in the world of the weird and the wonderful, we tell you about a sporty dog. Details after the break. Hola, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. And it's time for weather with our favorite weather lady, Angie. A 
big aloha to you. We are meeting after some time, so hope you're all safe. Now to the weather, it's been amazing. The last two weeks was actually the weather for the beach, but thank you for keeping indoors. Let's get around to the other centers. Looking to the west, it was actually nice and settled. You know what's the best thing to do right now? It's backyard gardening. Eastwards from Pekhava to Suva, after some rainy spells, the clouds brushed it away and now we have amazing spells. And up north, the clouds are nice and settled. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, high tide at 11.25 p.m. with low tide at 5.38 a.m. Sunrise, it's at 6.17. For tomorrow, brief showers are expected. Apart from that, the sun will take over. Tomorrow's stems, Suva will be quite cool with highs of 20 degrees. And looking further on to Wednesday, more mixed weather coming up. That's all from my world. Thank you for having me. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji Impulse, we asked, is it becoming scary that people in Fiji are now testing positive for COVID-19 after the usual 14-day isolation period? It should be another, uh, another 14 days extension because the virus will come back again after 14 days. Eh? Be wise and keep isolated. If you have the signs and symptoms of coronavirus, be wise uh, and stay home. From my view, uh, it's better to have it more than 14 days. Uh, as the government has uh, Minister of Health, it's uh, 28 days now, so I prefer 20 days and above. Recapping the main stories for tonight, woman tests positive for COVID-19 in Bar. Three recover from coronavirus and new procedures announced for hospital visitation. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question last week we had asked, should those caught breaching curfew be given mandatory jail time? 73% said yes. This week we're asking, should banks consider a loan repayment holiday for at least a year? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, sent in by Nigel Spencer Robinson. This is a snapshot taken from the hilltop of Nakawanga village on the island of Mali in the province of Madhuata. And show us what you've been up to during the lockdown and movement restrictions. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News, and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, stay safe. Bye for now. and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.